All right, guys. <clears throat> I decided to oil up my old baseball mitt. I haven't really used this very much because uh, I wasn't in the field very much. I was mainly played a lot of catcher. But this glove is like really good shape, but it was never really broken properly. Um, so every time I went in the field, it was like it was like stiff as a board. <laughs> so it was really hard to use. Um, so. I kept it and I found it and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and oil it up and see if we can break this down a little bit. So if you guys have an old baseball glove, maybe you can do the same thing if you're giving it to your one of your kids. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use, I have a couple different products here. Uh, mink oil <clears throat> and then one's like a paste like that. And then this one here kind of like a like a Vaseline jelly and then we also have <coughs> the liquid oil and I, I prefer the <coughs> the oil a little bit because you could just use a you just pour it on and use like a toothbrush or something to work it in so <coughs> so what I'm going to do is just pour a little bit of ink oil in the pocket and then just <coughs> work it around with a toothbrush just kind of this is an old glove <clears throat> so the leather's old it's getting dry cracked up so this will help it loosen up and also pre prevent it from cracking because it's just been sitting in the closet for years like i said it wasn't used that much just to play catch with my dad and you know catch grounders and stuff like that and then a lot of times it was just sitting because uh, I was usually <laughs> had a catcher's mitt on so this poor thing didn't get a lot of use so hopefully I can bring it back to life and it can maybe someone else can use it go ahead and put this thing on maybe it'd be a little easier to work in there I would probably use my hand but your hands get all greasy and then <clears throat> or if you want to wear like some rubber gloves or something that'd probably be a good idea make sure you put some kind of a towel or rag underneath because this stuff gets everywhere keep your toothbrush handy and don't be afraid to get on the material I mean it's not gonna hurt it, it might it's gonna discolor it and get a little darker but it'll actually prolong the life of everything just to soak it and then you're probably gonna want this to set for a while I'd set it overnight, maybe wipe it down with a dry rag after a couple days, get all the excess off, maybe even set it in the sun, help loosen the leather up. You can see the leather right here is really breaking down where my hand was. So I really want to get that up in there. That's where it really needs it. And that's going to be oily to the touch. So got to really let that soak in and dry it out before you use it but if you want your your leather to last you got to treat it <coughs> if not it will dry and crack and fall apart <coughs> I'm wanting to do this forever I just so I had a few minutes this morning. I figured go ahead and do a little treatment on this sucker. See how well it absorbs. Look at that. Look how dry that is. It's just like absorbing it. And it's just sucking it in. I 
I don't even know how much gloves are now. This one, man, I think this was like got on sale. It was like fifty or sixty bucks back back in the day. It was over a hundred dollars, and I think they marked it down or something. But <clears throat> never got a chance to use it a whole lot. But I wanted to keep it since this is. Dad passed away a few years ago, and this is one of the only memories I have. So, playing catch, and hopefully, one day I'll be playing catch with my daughter. She's not really into sports, but hopefully, I can get her to play catch with me. to get those corners and pour some right in the pocket <clears throat> so had a pretty good day yesterday um, a lady called had a tree in her house and <clears throat> thank God I had a bucket truck so I was able to basically uh, tie off to my bucket truck because it was a really really steep roof so I was able to just do a climber's knot repel knot and basically repel down off the roof and piece it out and then luckily there was a couple trees nearby we were able to rig the remainder of the tree to a couple more trees and put a tag line on one and a <clears throat> threw another one through the crotch of a tree and we were able to lower it down safely and control it. It wasn't a huge tree, it was just a probably a 50 foot oak tree, probably about 30 years old. So it was like, you know, oak, oak's about 57 pound, pounds per cubic foot. So it's probably, I don't know, 2,000 pounds or something like that. <clears throat> 2,500 whole tree maybe. But we only had to, once I got the remainder of the brush off the house and blocked it down, it was, I don't know, probably a, I don't know, eight or 900 pound thousand pounds that we had to rig off the roof after I got the top on of it. I, mean, I think I need a bigger brush. <laughs> I'll probably do another treatment later. Just wanted to get a coat on here get the majority of it kind of wet down I kind of like the look of it it kind of darkens the leather I did my boots this morning that's what I was like you know what I'm already doing this I might as well go ahead and do my glove I've been meaning to do this for a long time and just have never got around to it so already starting to loosen up oh yeah it feels much better go ahead and it's amazing what a little mink oil will do to a, to a baseball glove and it's only a couple bucks if you're spending you know these gloves are expensive I mean you're probably spending close to a hundred bucks or you know, 50 or 60 or 100 or I'm sure some of these are way over 100 bucks. Might as well go ahead and spend a few dollars on some mink oil or whatever you prefer and make your prolong the life of your glove. And also, too, and it's going to make it 
a lot more user friendly once you get this this leather loosened up and it can you know fit to your hand and then some people also too I've seen they put a baseball in there and then they kind of like wrap it up with a bungee cord or something and it helps to conform to the glove and the ball and the hand and everything else so oh yeah that's much better much better now all I need is a uh, someone to play catch with <laughs> yeah that that poor glove was dry as a bone that really needed the needed some love just an old toothbrush is really works well to get into all those little areas you can tell this thing is so dry I mean you could just continually you could probably do this two three or four times and it would just suck up all the oil it is just drinking it up you can put a little more in the pocket too because that's where you really want the leather to be really like soft so I got that bend in there I'm trying to get it to where it maybe conforms a little better rather than just being that one crease I'd rather have it soft so I can grab that ball it's just so used to being folded in that one position so I want to loosen that up get it really pliable so let's see it's so just used to being in that one that one position so it's hard to grab a ball if it's just that one position much better maybe want to put some leather conditioner on there too I don't have any right now but I had some a couple years ago man that made a huge difference that leather conditioner that, that's really what this thing needs is the some leather conditioner so you, it'll just loosen up and be real pliable and just conform to your you know whatever you want so you might try that too especially in a brand new glove make it just exactly how you want loosen that leather up make it to um, shape exactly the way you want it but I'm going to hit this with a oil a few more times, let it set, let it absorb, and then hit it again a few more times. And just really get that, that leather nice and pliable and saturated. And then this glove will last a lot longer. You want to also try to get these, the, the weaving, because that's what usually breaks. And that's probably what is hardest to repair. You don't want those weaves to break because there's not many you'd have to you know fix it yourself because I don't even know where you would take it to have those have your glove reweaved and then it would probably cost more than replacing it so you definitely want to hit all those everything that holds the glove together you make sure those are like drenched because once those break then the whole glove's shot unless you can repair it yourself or you want to spend the extra money to have it repaired then you're probably gonna to have to get a tool to do it because it'd be hard to do without some type of stitching equipment go through all those holes oh yeah that's that's looking much better I think I'm gonna go through this whole can of mink oil. <laughs> this glove's so dry. 
So today, what are we going to do today? Got a couple estimates to do, and then I got a couple smaller jobs that can be done today. And I also want to order some parts. Thinking about building a another brush hog, and they're like anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars. Things have just gotten out of hand. I brought my bush hog on sale about seven or eight years ago for like 2,500 bucks, brand new. And now that same exact brush hog is over $5,000. <clears> That's without any add-ons or anything. That's just the basic, basic, basic. And that's the cheapest one that I could find. Another one from Ditch Witch, the Blue Diamond, it's like almost $10,000 without any additional stuff like push bars or anything. And we have a metal fab shop, so I think what we're going to do, and we don't really need need another brush hog, it'd just be nice to have a backup because every once in a while you have a big job and we have two mini skids and brush hogs are they just they take a lot of power to run and it takes a lot of hydraulic pressure constant pressure it has a tendency to heat up not only the hydraulic oil the pumps but also have a tendency to put a strain on the machines and it heats up the everything including the the engine which is the last time we used it started overheating the machine because usually when you're brush hogging you're creating a lot of dust and debris and it gets sucked through the cooling system clogs everything up and then you're going full tilt because you want to turn that blade as fast as possible and cut as much material as possible and be as efficient as possible you end up overheating the machine but you can do a lot in like 30 minutes with the brush hog on a skid steer so my idea is to have two and within half an hour on two machines you can do hours worth of work and usually that's about all we do anyway like an hour or 30 minutes take a break let the machines cool down do another 30 minutes and you can get a lot done in a small amount of time so that's the plan we will see how ooh, I've got too much that time we will see what happens I think I can because we have a lot of extra steel around the shop and I mean, there's not much to it. It's just a box. I'm creating a box with the open end box. So that would be one four sided box, I guess. We already have an attachment plate, quite a few of them that we're not using. All I need is a motor and a motor and a gearbox so let's see if I can order one of those today get Tony to start fabbing up a box all right let's see this oh yeah that's much better much better and if nothing else <laughs> this thing's gonna age a lot longer a lot better instead of just sitting around it'll be absorbing oil Oh yeah, much better. So when I come back tonight, in a couple days, set this thing in the sun, heat it up, let thing, let that glove absorb, heat up, absorb some more of that oil. See how she does. Maybe this weekend I'll. But. Oh, that's much more pliable now. But I do need some leather conditioner because it's still a little bit stiff. It does loosen it up a little bit, but conditioner, of course, will do a lot more for it. And you could even 
take a rubber band or bungee cord and now you can change the shape of it if you want it to maybe break that that fold I'm gonna put a rubber band or something around there and see if I can change that shape a little bit make it a little more user-friendly oh yeah all right guys that's all I have I might leave a link here for this mink oil if you guys are interested and time to go to work that took about 20 minutes it's not too bad so if you've got an extra 15 20 minutes oil your glove down and make it last for a lot longer all right guys if you have any questions or comments leave them in the description please crush the like button and let's go do some tree work